tonight i just have this beautiful title listen to this title it says jealously guard this i want you to guard this very very jealously you know how you can be jealous about something and guard it yeah i want to talk about something that you should guard and guarding means you should protect with all that you have this thing that i'm going to talk about today and i'm basing all this in the bible in the book of proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 it says actually i'm not i'm not reading it verbatim but you can go read it it says you should guard your heart with all diligence because out of the heart of a man comes the issues of life and i want us to talk about what does that mean when 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 the bible says that issues of life issues of life come from the heart so it follows that it follows that God has put the issues of life in a man's heart. And when you talk about a man's, I'm talking about a man and a woman, all people, like humanity. Let's use a word humanity because people understand. The issues of life, the things concerning life itself, come from you, within you. So that means when you're born, the first day you cry and you come out of your mother's womb, everything concerning your life is within that package. Yes, you have to go through the motions, you have to go through school, you have to go through whatever, life. But the issues of life, the issues concerning your life and my life are within you. Because that's what the Bible has taught us, that the issues of life are inside of you. But most of us have been going from outside to, to, to gain, you know, to, to get, to, to, to try and find out who we are. But that's wrong. Who we are is already inside of you because the Bible is telling us here the heart has the issues of life so what, this is a wisdom of the of, of, of the Word of God this is not wisdom from us from from school this is not wisdom you can learn from anywhere else but this wisdom we get from the Bible the Bible has told us that guard your heart diligently because out of your heart comes the issues of life. So what does that mean? Uh, it means everything concerning, concerning your life, everything concerning your soul and your life on this earth is inside of your inner man. So God has put, that, that's why you hear people say uh, you have a star. When everyone is born, we have a star. What does that mean? It's already predetermined what you will be. Do you believe that or, or, or do you have a different opinion? But I'm going to prove you here through the word of God that our lives are predetermined. There is something we call predestination. Predestination is God has already determined who you're going to be and the length of days that you're going to live. Your life is predetermined or there is a will of God over your, your life. But I, I want to shock you a little bit here. Who you were born to be is usually not who you were raised to be. And that's, that's, that's kind of like, I'm letting it sink in a little bit. Whom you were born to be is not necessarily whom you were raised to be. Whom you were born to be is God's destiny. But whom you were raised to be because of the environment, because of the upbringing, because of the people around you, your friends, your teachers, your parents, because of interacting with life itself. And we know time and chance happens to everybody. Because of this, whether you're a Christian or you're not, whether you're born again or not, time and chance happens to everybody. And this makes us to be raised a little bit differently. So who we are today is most probably who we were raised to be. But God had a destiny. There is something you were born to do. And that's what I want to talk about today. So the book of Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 tells us, Guard your heart with all diligence because issues of life comes from there. That means every program that God wanted you to have is in your heart. 
And when we talk about a, a man's heart, it's not the one that pumps blood. It's the spirit of a man. And the spirit of a man is connected with the soul of a man. Because the soul of a man is intric intricately connected to the spirit. When God made Adam out of soil, in the beginning he just had a body and a mind. But he was not alive. But when God breathed life, the spirit of, of man, he breathed the spirit of man in him. And his mind, that is his soul, became connected to his spirit and he became a living being. So the only reason you and me are alive today is because we have a spirit and our soul is working in concert or together with the spirit and the body. So we, we work in these three parts, the body to, to help us do our daily functions, the soul which has the mind and the will that is connected to the spirit of a man. And when one person dies, the three are separated. The soul and the spirit are separated from the body. So I just wanted to explain a little bit what is that, that inner man which the Bible tells us to guard diligently. We are supposed to, supposed to guard it so, so diligently because issues of life comes from there. What are issues of life? Let's talk about issues of life. Issues of life, it's life itself life itself and its days how many days you're going to to live it's determined already in your spirit and issues of life also involves money involve involves your finances involves your marriage name every issue of life whom you are supposed to be health your health is also programmed in there in your inner man so we're talking about issues of life Another issue of life I want to mention here is your spirituality. Your relationship with God is also in your heart. So God made, made us from the word go, having that ability to relate to him. So we have this spirituality part inside the inner man. That inner man we keep talking about, your heart. There is you whom you see. You see me here. This is my body. But you can't see my inner man. You can't see my soul. And you can't see my spirit. Because they're, they're not something you can touch. They're, they're, they're spiritual things. But you can see the physical part of me. You two are, everyone is like that. And that is why people die. It's a very easy concept. But I find people uh, troubled to understand that when a person dies, this physical body is you you see it there but the person is left he's not there that is the inner man i want to talk about that you should guard jealously the bible has taught us to guard that man jealously diligently do everything it takes to guard that man do whatever it takes to guard it i want to give a simple example here if you and me Today got a million dollars. Someone came and gave us in, in cash. A million dollars. A lot of money in cash in a box. You would be so afraid to take it home because you would risk, oh, maybe someone will come at night and steal it. Maybe while I sleep, the rats in the house will come and eat it. Maybe while I sleep, the, the house will catch fire and the, the money will be burnt. You would guard that money. You would take it and say, I'm not going to keep it in the house because someone might break in and steal it. I am not going to keep it in, in, in the kitchen because it might catch fire. What am I going to do? You either go hide it in a very safe place, you, you, you know, where it can't be seen, or you rush to the bank. You say, I want the bank to keep that money because you're guarding that money jealously so it doesn't get lost so you get to use it right so i just want to talk about guarding what do i mean by guarding imagine you have a million dollars someone gave you in, in in cash i would take advantage i would run to the bank i would not keep it in the house i would make sure that i have that money even a year later you know what i mean i guard it keep it safe do whatever it takes to to make sure that that money is safe the same thing happens. I want to give a second example just to help us understand this guarding. Our children, remember when you had a first baby? If you don't, you will. If you had, remember the baby, a small baby, how we take care of it. We guard it. We guard it because it's brittle. It's frail. 
it can it, it, anything could happen it, it has no good immunity it has no good the body is weak it can be crushed it can die easily so the mother you can see the mother taking advantage and 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 and, and taking care of that baby guarding 24 hours that's how we guard take that those two examples i gave of guarding and and being very diligently and working very hard and bring it out to yourself i want you and me to ask us this question how diligently how diligently how jealously have you guarded your heart can you answer that question most of us will say i don't even know how to do it most of us will say how do you do that but i want to ask you a question as well before we answer that question you do take care of your body right you do take care of your your body you shower because you'll smell if you don't when you're sick you make sure that it's healed you exercise so that you're strong you eat food when it's hungry when, when hungry when the body needs something when you're thirsty you take water i mean you take care of your body you go to bed when it needs to that that is also guarding your body you guard your body if someone comes to attack you i'm not asking people to fight but you will defend you will automatically defend yourself right if someone attacks your your people like your your your, your wife your kids you will defend them that is guarding of the body but i wanted to ask you what about the inner man and I'm taking you back to Proverbs 4:23. God the Father, the Holy Spirit has told us, guard your heart with all diligence because out of it comes the issues of life. If the whole life, God has put the whole life in your heart, all the pertaining life, everything. It's in that heart. What have you done to 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 guard it? diligently jealously with all your heart with all your mind with everything you have most of us don't even know but that's i wanted to tell you that life itself health your finances are in your heart and satan knows this that's why he has blinded us so that we do none of us most of us don't take care of the heart we take care of the body guard your heart and i want you to go and read proverbs 4 from 4 to 23 and go all the way down then you will understand because the holy spirit did not leave us uh, without an idea what it is to, to guard ourselves from and how to he mentioned immediately there your mouth your mouth what comes out of your mouth after uh, i think that's proverbs 2 4 maybe 24 25 26 there he talks about taking care of what you say with your mouth then he talks about your eyes taking care of what you see with your mouth then he talks about your feet taking care of where you go with your feet that is in proverbs so i'm not manufacturing this one at least those three are mentioned so we have to when you talk about guarding the heart we have to talk about if your inner man is within you then what are the doors how do, how what how do things get in your heart because things get in your heart, in your spirit, in your heart, your spirit, and your soul. There are several gateways. First is your mind is the one that feeds, your, your soul is the one that feeds your spirit. And your soul is connected to the brain, and the brain is connected to the five senses, physical senses. So through the five physical senses, things get into our brain and then our brain is it's connected to our soul and our soul feeds the spirit that's how things get in and you know how things get out again from the spirit once you feed it your spirit forms a character we, who is real you you can fake it here but your spirit is a real you once you feed your soul with something it forms a character and then from the heart things come out back out from the heart to the brain and the brain makes desires and acts outside it's it's an in and out so what you put in it's what you'll form a character in your spirit that will be reflected in your body and your senses how you behave how you talk how you what you touch what you where you go how you think how you make decisions so you know what i mean so how do you guard the heart you guard the input what's coming in so that you can form the character and that character 
will produce an output. And that output, the Bible calls it good works. The works, the works, the character. A good man, when you hear a good man, he was a good man. It's because the heart was good. So it's producing good. But someone must have fed the heart or trained it to be good. So there is a doorway, there is a doorway to your heart. Your heart has doorways. Bible has told us one is the eye. What you see goes to your brain, it's processed, then it drops to your soul and to your spirit and you form a character. So be very, very careful. In fact, if you read the Proverbs there, it says, look straight. Do not look to the left or to the right. Look straight, focus with life. It also, uh, it also, also says, walk straight. Do not try to walk to the left or to the right. Focus where you're going. First, I want to say our focus is to go to heaven, right? So we are focused to go to heaven and we are focused in line with that to please God. So that's our focus. The Bible in that book of Proverbs it says, look straight. Do not try to look to the left or to the right. Look straight. Focus on heaven and pleasing God. Also, walk towards that goal. Walk towards heaven. You know, walk straight. Do not try to go to the left or to the right. In the mouth, speak what you're focused on. Stop speaking something that you're not focused on. Stop hearing any voice that's telling you otherwise. The voices should always be telling us focus to heaven, going to the Father, and pleasing Jesus Christ. Remember, the world has a lot of distractions. They'll be pulling us aside. You know what I mean? They'll be asking us to focus on other things. So they're, 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 the devil is going to bring a lot of uh, distraction and temptations to make us focus away our eyes from heaven and pleasing God to something else. There is a lot of noise in the world right now, making us focus away, making us to veer, to move away from, from the straight, focused path in accordance to Proverbs 4 and 23 all the way down. Walk straight. Do not try to look aside. Be a soldier who is focused. So we are being asked here to guard the heart by focusing diligently, fixing, fixing our heart to Jesus and heaven and looking intently and avoiding the temptation of looking away. Remember, Satan and his, his cohorts and the world is trying to distract us to look aside. It's trying to distract us to walk aside. And that's, if you walk aside, you're feeding your heart. So you're, you're actually guarding the five senses against inputs that goes to the heart. The eyes, the ear, the mouth, the touch, the, the feet, the going, you know, the senses, the bodily senses, desires. You're guarding what comes in. I want to give an example here. For example, if all you do with your eyes is go to TikTok and keep watching videos, people dancing and go online and watch all types of movies and it's all about movies, even even the X-rated ones and, 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 and all you do is that. What do you think you're feeding your heart with more of the world there is no way you can focus on the father and in heaven and pleasing god if all you do is feed your heart with the world through the eyes let's say all you listen to is gossip is gossip and and politics and i i do listen to news because i need to know what's going on but it's just gossip and negative things all you feed your heart with is negative stuff gossip about others it's 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 just useless things, cursings and negative words. What do you think is getting into your heart, all that negativity? Is that guarding your heart diligently? No, it's not. If all you do is touch things that you're not supposed to touch, it's go with your feet to places where you're not supposed to go. And you know places where you should not go. You know places where Jesus would not be found. That's where you go. You're again feeding your inner man with the wrong thing. You're not guarding it. So guard your heart by senses. Do not allow something that is not focusing you to heaven and pleasing God enter your heart. Remember, all the issues of life 
are in that spirit, are in your spirit, including heaven, including when you're going to die, when you're going to transit to heaven. But that can be changed. Remember what I said in the beginning here? What you were born to be is not necessarily what you are raised or were raised to be. You might be doing something very different by, by how you were raised, but not, that does not mean that's what God wanted you to do. I believe with all my heart, but this is mine. People die even before their time. Why? Because they have not guarded their heart. If, if God put the issues of life, he, he programmed you to go 90 years. He programmed you to, 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 to be a preacher. He programmed you to, to, be, to be a big man, to be the president, a holy man. But now because of you not guarding the heart, Satan has introduced all types of sin. Pornography has introduced drunkenness, cigarettes, all types of drugs. Do you think the issue of life God put in your life to be 80 years or 90? Do you think you're going to live up to 90? No, because you have not guarded your heart he told you the issues of life i have put good things in you and god has nothing negative good things in you and who you are supposed to be but you're not you're not guarding it so you're allowing the enemy and stuff that shouldn't be form a character in you that will make you not to do what you were born to do but then you will be doing what you were raised to do and you will never do what really the will of God was for you. You might end up dying early. You might end up not doing what you were supposed to do like Jonah. You were sent to preach, but you're running away. Many of us are like that because he was not guarding his heart. So guard your heart like crazy. Do not allow things to come in your eyes that shouldn't go to your heart. Do not allow you hearing things that should, you should not hear. Do not touch things you, you're not supposed to touch. Do not go places you're not supposed to, to go. Do not feel feelings you're not supposed to be feeling. Guard that heart. Who gave you that heart? It's God. So allow the word of God. Hear the word of God. Some people, they're good preaching. There's a lot of voices out there on the internet. I am one of those small voices. But if you go and look and hear the right voice, your heart is guarded. You feed your, 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 your heart every day. And then the issues of life will turn out as God programmed you to do predestined. As God predestined you to be predestination. You will achieve your abilities. You will have the money you were supposed to have. You will have the positions you are supposed to have. A position. You will have possessions that you are supposed to have. You will be pleasing God because you are doing what he called you to do. But just guard that heart. Be very jealous. Be crazy about that inner man. Do not allow the, uh, uh, an enemy enter there. Do not allow another voice that's not of God. Do not allow things that shouldn't be. I would say in conclusion, I want to be concluding, that I think most of us here have not been taking care of our inner man. We have not guarded that inner man the way we, are, we have been told to do, according to Proverbs 4 and 23. Be very jealous. In fact, you should die. Do you know the apostles? Apostles agreed to die because of their inner man. They, they, they did not care. They could not compromise. If someone comes and tells you that you have only one choice, you either dead or give up your faith. You know why people prefer this body to be destroyed? Because they are guarding the heart. They know the inner man is an eternal man. And that's why God wants you to put a lot of emphasis. And he has put a lot of emphasis not on the body. Because this body, in fact, at one point, Jesus is saying the body profits nothing. This, this body really has no profit. Because it turns out to just decompose back to soil when you die. So if you're just taking care of this body, it's very temporary. What you're doing is like only up to the day, but the, the moment you're out of it and you're not in control, bacteria will eat you up and turn you into soil where you came from. But there is something that lives on immortally, eternally. It's the body and the soul, the spirit and the soul, the inner man, the real you. So that's, that's where our focus should be. But look at how much we focus on, on this flesh. We focus how about houses, about money. And I'm not saying you shouldn't. I do. 
I focus on my career. I focus on a lot of things. But I realize that the career will come to an end at some point. The house is only up to maybe a certain age. Uh, the money will come to an end. You know? So I do it I, with wisdom. I know where, when I need it because I need it. But importantly, I came to know that I, I, I understood through the word of God that my inner man is the most important thing that God gave me. It's not this flesh. So when he tells me, guard jealously with diligence the inner man, then I understood my inner man, Satan, is not after the body. He is after your soul because that's more important. If he goes after your body, he can give you a disease. But, you know, Satan could go after your body. But he knows this body will end at some point. 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years at some point. So he knows that's just only for 100 years. But he still afflicts people. Remember Jesus saying that this a woman was bound by Satan for 18 years in the body he can do that he can possess people in the body people but all he wants is the soul that's the most important he's after the soul that's why the Bible tells us take care of your souls your spirit guard it diligently do everything possible everything you can to make sure that you do not lose your soul how Close the doors. The, 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 I told you the body, the, the spirit has, uh, has doors. And it's a, do it's a door through the soul, through the mind. And through the, the, it's a portal to your soul. The portal to your, to your spirit, inner man, to your heart, is your soul. And your soul, the door to your soul is your mind. And the mind, the door to your mind is your senses. So it's the very life we live. It's seeing. Do not see things that you should not see because it'll go into your heart and you will lose your soul, which is most important. It's eternal. Take care of your soul. Jesus came to die, not necessarily for our bodies. Yes, he heals us. He raised Lazarus, but Lazarus died as well. He healed uh, Mary Magdalene, but she still died as well. To show us that that's not the end, you know? That's not the, the means to an end, you know. Uh, he wanted to save our souls eternally. Take care of your soul. Come to Jesus if you do not know him. Establish a relationship. Be born again. Look for a local pastor and he'll pray for you and join a fellowship of believers. I always tell people that's the most important thing you'll ever do on this uh, on this, on this. Uh, life and be baptized in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Be born again. Be changed man. And the, 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 what we talked about, we talk about being born again. Being born again is because you were dead in the spirit, the inner man. If you don't know what I'm talking about or what it means, it means your man, you just take care of your body and your li and the physical life, but your man is just dead. God comes in when you hear a word like I am preaching. You understand, you accept Jesus, he raises that man back up, and then that's the start of your salvation journey. Then you guard jealously. If you fail, you rise up again. If you sin, you repent, you, you, you keep at it, keep at it. That is why Apostle Paul says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That is guarding diligently our souls and our heart against the devil and the world. We are in this world, but we are not on this world. That means we have a body, but importantly, the spirit is the most important. The heart of man, guard it like never before. You can't afford to lose it. But Jesus is there to give you grace. It's by grace, accepting him. Then from there, the Holy Spirit is going to help you guard. You don't do this on your own. I, I may have preached. Someone will say, oh, no, I need to do something. No, now I want to come to the easy part. All you need is to start the journey, accepting Jesus as a Lord and Savior. If you're backslidden, you need to repent and rededicate yourself to the Lord. From there, you need the Holy Spirit to take you through this journey and to help you to guard your heart. He will be telling you, don't do this. You should not be seeing this. And be obedient when he tells you that. That's what we call guarding. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am done here with today's lessons it's my first time to go live on facebook and youtube at the same time i can't wait to see how it came through uh god bless you and i'll see you next time have a great day or a great evening god bless you amen